All right, guys. So the Jets are finally, finally, finally on the board. Um, you know, we missed out on guys like Joe Tooney, guys like Jack Conklin and whatnot. Uh, Byron Jones is another guy who the Miami Dolphins just uh, picked up not too long ago within the last couple hours. But we're finally on the board. Finally. Um, nothing too crazy. Not a mass, not a, you know, mega deal or anything insane like that. But it's George Fant, the tackle from Seattle. Uh, three years, $30 million. $13 million guaranteed, which is a solid price range for the guaranteed money. But at the end of the day... I mean, we all watched the Jets games last season. We all know how bad the tackle position was last year for the team. So just getting bodies in the building will help. Um, but I got to be honest with you, this deal kind of reminds me, interestingly enough, of the New York Knicks and kind of how they went about their free agent um, acquisitions last offseason. Everybody knows they were trying to go out and try to, you know, um, targeting guys like uh, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. All these big name dudes, they just missed. They just swung and missed, swung and missed, swung and missed, and uh, ended up uh, settling for guys uh, just like random kind of you know Alfred Paytons and, and whatnot. I feel as and by overpaying for those guys, I don't want the Jets to be in the same kind of situation where we're just overpaying for um, tier two, tier three guys. And I'm not saying that Fant is a tier two or tier three guy. All I'm saying is that I don't think Fant will take this offensive line over the top. Um, it's a good signing. It's a good depth move. Um, I do expect him to come in because, you know, at the end of the day, he is getting paid the $10 million um, minus the guaranteed money. Um, so that kind of indicates that he's probably going to get the starting nod at some point. Uh, but we'll see how he does throughout camp and kind of monitor the situation. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, man, like, I don't think I don't. It sucks because I don't think that there's going to be enough tackles in this draft because now with the Cardinals making a move and acquiring DeAndre Hopkins, I kind of think that takes them out of the CD Lamb, Jerry Judy conversation at spot number seven, which in turn leads the Cardinals to probably pick a guy like Jedrick Wills out of Bama, a Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa. Um, you know, one of these top tackles, a Makai Becton out of Louisville, uh, or even an Andrew Thomas as, as well. So, it, it kind of just pushes the wide receivers down a little bit lower, which, you know, makes acquiring a tackle, acquiring a guard a little bit harder for this Jets team. And with guys, like I said off um, before, off the board, like Joe Tooney and Jack Conklin and whatnot, um, it, it's just, it's almost like we're creating uh, a very, very difficult path to get an offensive line. So I'll leave it there. Bottom line is, did we upgrade the position? Yes. Did we overpay a little bit? Yes, but, you know, we're, we're not the best team in the world. We are going to have to overpay for some guys. But at the end of the day, we did upgrade, so I'm pumped about that. So uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Go Jets.